Hello and welcome. How's everybody doing? Enjoying KubeCon? It's wonderful to be here. We miss you very much. We miss you all very much. But I'm glad that we can be here on this virtual platform enjoying KubeCon. We've got a real treat in store for you right now. We have the Kubernetes Steering AMA. So the way this session is going to work is we have all of steering here. We're going to go through who we are as Kubernetes Steering, what we do uh, very briefly, and then open it up for AMA. So we ask that you all, uh, or any questions you have, can you please paste them in the Q&A box? Or we'll also be monitoring the Slack um, channel as well. So there's a thread there in the 2-kubecon-maintainer channel. Please feel free to ask any questions. And when we go to the AMA section, uh, we will uh, take those questions on. So thank you for being here. It's wonderful to see you all. We have all of steering here. And let's get into it. So I'm going to pass it over to intros. So who we are and what we do, I'll kick it off and then we'll go through the rest of the team here is all joining us. So my name is Lachlan Evenson. I work for uh, Microsoft as a principal engineer at Microsoft. Um, and I've been on steering for the last few months. Uh, and in the last few months, we've been working hard and I'm excited to share everything that we've been doing. So you can find me at uh, I'm number seven there, Locky83 on Kubernetes Slack if you want to chat. I will pass it to Christoph. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Christoph Blecker. Uh, I work for Red Hat uh, doing site reliability engineering work. Um, I'm also a technical lead for the Contributor Experience Special Interest Group. Um, and I'm based out of uh, British Columbia, Canada. I'll pass it over to uh, Derek. Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Derek. I also work at Red Hat. I'm a distinguished engineer uh, working in product engineering. Um, also, uh, I've been serving now, I guess, my third year in steering, and uh, it's been fun. And it's always a pleasure to meet both virtually and in person here. And with that, I will pass it on to Dims. Can you hear me? Um, I work for VMware. I live in Boston, and I help out with uh, SIG architecture and a few other SIGs, um, cross-cutting SIGs as well. I'll pass it on to Nikita. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Nikita, I'm in India, and I work at VMware with DIMS, and I'm a co-technical lead for SIG Contributor Experience with Christoph. Um, with that, Paris. And I think, I think we ended here. Hi everyone, I'm Paris, I work at Apple, I live in California. Uh, this is my first year on steering, I think we're first completed year. Um, and I'm just so happy to be here. I miss everybody. I wish we were on site right now, but um, we're still happy to be here. And Lucky, I think that's it. Yes, do we miss Aaron as well? It's fine. I, I know I wasn't at the last KubeCon, so uh, hi, uh, I'm Aaron Krickenberger. Uh, this is also my third year on steering. Uh, I'm a chair of uh, SIG testing. I served as the 114 release lead, and I'm uh, organizing the Kate Sinfer working group uh, alongside DIMS and uh, Bart Smikla. Uh, excited to be here. Lucky, back to you. And I'm going to quickly pass it back to Nikita. I already did the intro, but I can do it again. Uh, so I'm all the way in India, work with Dems at Kuyamar, and uh, a co-technical lead with Christoph on contributor experience. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. And sorry about that. I had trouble keeping track, but that's okay. It's okay. Two intros are better than none. <laughs> Fantastic. So next we're going to get into who we are and what we do. So I'm going to pass it back to Dems. Dims, take it away. Uh, we are here for Cloud Native Con, KubeCon. So we are technically, uh, uh, you know, Linux Foundation, CNCF, and then uh, the Kubernetes project comes under CNCF. Uh, and uh, we are essentially, the, the steering committee is the one-stop shop uh, for everything related to Kubernetes when it comes to uh, the legal structure and organization and stuff like that. 
So we have liaisons to CNCF, we request funding, we work with them around trademarks and copyrights um, and a whole bunch of other things. So back, uh, back to Lucky. Thanks, Dims. And next we're going to hand it to Derek, who's going to show us a little bit about the organizational structure of Kubernetes as a project. I'll pass it to you, Derek. Thanks, Lucky. So uh, Kubernetes has grown to be a, a very big project now. Uh, about five or six years into its life cycle. Um, and so within steering, what we largely do is look to provide uh, project wide governance, but we aspire to delegate uh, decision making to local um, interest groups uh, as much as possible. So the overall structure of uh, interest groups, both uh, domain specific and horizontal are largely overseen by the steering committee. And then uh, issues related to project-wide governance policies like code of conduct, et cetera, are largely uh, driven out of steering or delegated to appropriate subcommittee. Um, many folks, when they interact with uh, Kubernetes, actually never need to interact with steering. And that's actually a sign that I think we're doing a pretty good job in many cases because we've delegated appropriately. So many folks who engage with the project might engage with a particular sub-project like the scheduler or the kubelet or uh, API machinery. Um, and each of these sub projects tend to get sponsored by a higher order uh, special interest group and special interest groups uh, would be things like node or um, where you have a very domain specific uh, interest or you have horizontal groups who kind of uh, keep uh, the cross project structure wheels going things like architecture or release. Um, but within steering, uh, we're here to try to make sure that we can adjust the project structure. Um, uh, to meet the present needs. And uh, if you do find yourself needing to uh, engage with us, uh, we're always happy to uh, help uh, learn and adjust on what we can do better in the community. Uh, we'll pass it back to you, Lucky. Thank you, Derek. So we did actually place the link. You can see it there at the bottom. If you want to reference that diagram, it's a great diagram to print out and have on your wall as you're interacting with the Kubernetes community. So you can find the right place to engage for whatever you need or whatever way you'd like to contribute. Thank you for Derek. Uh, next, we're going to move to Nikita and we have a few items that we've been working on um, the past few months. So Nikita is going to give us an update there. I'll pass it to Nikita. Hey, um, so we've been working on a bunch of cool stuff. Uh, so one big change that we've rolled out uh, last month was requiring unconscious bias training for all sick chairs. And technically, it's we understand that a 30 minute training isn't going to eliminate bias completely. But we hope that this is going to be a first step towards at least identifying the languages and uh, behaviors that could be problematic uh, for uh, proliferating this bias. Um, the other thing that we work on is uh, running the Code of Conduct Committee elections. So we did that this month. Uh, and congratulations to Karen, Tim, and Celeste for winning the election and joining the committee. And th big thanks to Trace, Jennifer, and Carolyn for all their time on the Code of Conduct Committee. Uh, one of my really favorite things that we've been working on is the steering committee liaisons. So, uh, so each community group, like six working groups and user groups, are assigned a steering committee point of contact. And the point of contact is used um, to like for everything. Uh, and they basically act as a main uh, feedback loop for maintaining the group's health and uh, could be used for something like reshaping project priorities or identifying problem areas and celebrating wins. Uh, we also have something very cool about annual reports, but Paris is going to go into detail about that after this. Uh, something else that we've been looking into is improving our uh, steering meeting structure to make sure that we're using, we're consistently using the raise hand feature in Zoom, time boxing discussions, and making sure we don't really have that loudest voice in the room kind of a thing. Um, so yeah, these are some of the cool things that we've been doing these days and uh, back to you, Lucky. Thanks, Nikita. As you can see, you know, we're very active in the community, taking steps to help grow it. So thank you for sharing that with everybody, Nikita. Excellent. Uh, next, we're going to move on uh, and Aaron's going to share a lot about SIGs and the scope of the project. So I'll pass it to Aaron. Thank you. Hey, uh, they gave me the
non hierarchical it's sort of made up of a bunch of non hierarchical groups there are many different areas you within which you can contribute we try to have some sense of organization not all groups are the same uh, some of them focus on deep verticals like no, you know node or networking or storage whereas others are more horizontal across the project cross cutting concerns like api machinery or multi cluster uh, and then you have uh, things that are more trying to set project policy, like architecture release or testing or contributor experience. Um, uh, working groups are things that sort of span multiple SIGs. Uh, and then committees, as Derek pointed out earlier, are uh, points of escalation. Uh, so the other important point here is for every single one of these boxes, there are about two or three people who would be uh, happy to chat with you about what's going on in that area of the project. Back to you, Lucky. Excellent, thank you, Aaron. Uh, and so as you can see, the project is massive and scales out. There are many different functions inside the Kubernetes project, committees, uh, SIGs, working groups. So in order to actually manage the scaling and making sure that all those different parts of uh, the Kubernetes project are managed well and taken care of, uh, we're actually introduced annual reports, which uh, Paris is going to take us through. Over to you, Paris. Hi, everyone. Uh, so this year, one of the major initiatives that we've been working on is annual reports. Uh, as Aaron showed you with that diagram, we have 37 groups. Uh, that is a ton to keep up with. Uh, we also have a monthly community meeting where our groups have been giving 10-minute updates. But after, after a while, things start to accumulate and updates become a massive uh, and our end users are wondering how they can find out information about individual groups uh, on a certain cadence. So we've introduced this concept of annual reports, other open source projects that run very large scale distributed uh, groups like we do have very similar structures as well. Uh, and this will actually unfold uh, for most special interest groups uh, in January of 2021. Uh, we're actually rolling it out right now as we speak to our working groups because our working groups are a little bit more temporary in nature anyway. So it makes sense to kind of roll things out with them first. Um, so we're working out uh, some of the process there with them too. Uh, we actually have already had two working groups that are about to kind of roll down and um, think about what their roll down process looks like now that we've kind of engaged with them to see you know, what their community needs are. Uh, as Nikita mentioned, the liaison bit is a big part of this because we're really trying to make further connections within our ever growing community. Uh, and as things spread wider and wider, it's really important for us to just hone in on uh, what's working and what's not in some of these groups and really help out uh, in a more proactive fashion. Um, but that's about it. Locky, back to you. Thank you, Paris. Now a hot topic that's happening in the community right now, we're going to have Christoph take us through uh, steering committee elections. I'll pass it to Christoph. So the seven of us here were all elected uh, out of the community to steering. Um, we, we had a couple of years ago a bootstrap process that kind of kicked off and as we developed and figured out how to govern a, a project the size of, of Kubernetes. So at this point, all seven of us are actually elected from the community um, to, to have a seat on steering and to um, um, contribute our voices to, to the discussions and, and such that we're, we're talking about. Um, the election process for 2020 uh, has actually kicked off. It kicked off about a week ago or so. Um, so there, right now we're in the um, nomination period. Uh, there is uh, details in the links there about um, uh, where to go to to nominate somebody or self-nominate uh, to to run on the, um, the to, for the Kubernetes steering committee. What the um, criteria is to be able to vote. Uh, this nomination period closes on September the 8th uh, and then uh, mid-September around the 14th or so the ballots will end up going out uh, for uh, this year's election. So if you're interested in learning either how to nominate somebody or uh, checking if you're eligible to vote uh, in this year's election, uh, please check out those links. Uh, Lockheed, back to you. 
Thank you, Christoph. So I'm just going to go through how you can connect with steering. So we have a, a couple of different forums. If you're in the Kubernetes Slack, there is the steering dash committee channel. P uh, please feel free to go over there and ask any questions you have of us or of steering. Um, we monitor that channel. Uh, so thank you. Uh, mailing lists. We have both a, a public and a private mailing list uh, for conversations to start or different things that you might want to raise with steering. Um, and then we have meetings. So we have public meetings on the first Monday at 11 a.m. U.S. Pacific time. You are welcome to join. We publish an agenda there. If you have any items you'd like to add to that agenda, uh, please feel free and we'll um, slot them into subsequent meetings. Uh, we also publish uh, a YouTube playlist uh, as well from all past meetings. So if you have a topic that you're interested to learn more about or to how decisions were made, all those decisions are posted publicly on the YouTube uh, playlist. Uh, I will find a link to that. And you can obviously file an issue um, upstream um, using the Kubernetes steering GitHub repository. So they are just different ways you can interact with us. And obviously, we're all around as well as uh, individuals if you want to find us on um, Kubernetes Slack. So we'd encourage you to come talk to us um, and we'd love to connect you into the Kubernetes uh, community and hear from how the community is working uh, with and for you. So they are different ways you can find us. Now we're going to move over to a time of AMA. So um, I'm again going to ask that people uh, enter questions in the Q&A box. So any questions that you might have about anything you just learned or anything about the Kubernetes community, whether you're a, a long time contributor or a brand new contributor, we'd love to um, answer your questions. And we also have in the maintainer channel uh, of the uh, KubeCon EU Slack, uh, a place there to ask questions that we'll be monitoring as well. So we're gonna uh, put everybody up on screen um, and I have a question here already, so we should see everybody roll in. Wonderful, you can see all of us. Fantastic. Okay, excellent. So I am going to read out the question we have here. Hello. Okay, um, what do you know now that you didn't know when you started on the steering committee and what advice do you give people based on what you've learned? Anybody like to dive in? Go go ahead, Aaron, and then Paris. Go ahead, Aaron, and then Paris. So so I so uh, so you know, I, I you know, uh, Kubernetes is uh, is people first and foremost. I got introduced to the project just sort of trying to contribute code and uh, make things better that way. But I very quickly realized that there are a bunch of people who care very deeply about what we do and how we do it. Uh, and that uh, in order to effectively get real things accomplished, involved, for better or for worse, talking to people. Uh, but it turned out to be not such a, a scary thing. I think being able to interact with the community uh, really quickly Slack or asynchronously via uh, discuss or, you know, having a chat on issues or pull requests uh, was incredibly helpful. Uh, and so although sometimes it was really intimidating, the level of scrutiny my code might get or the level of feedback my suggestions for change might receive, uh, I quickly realized it all came from a place of people uh, caring and the most important thing to do was to figure out how could we like make incremental progress uh and move forward uh and uh yeah that's that's the advice that i would give uh, I Excellent. Think I saw thank you yeah go ahead paris um i was gonna say that um not everything that comes to steering needs an answer right away uh, I'm coming from a community back, a community manager background, and uh, I'm very used to giving or finding solutions very quickly. Um, but some of the problems that come to us are a little bit more ambiguous in nature. That's why they're here. That's why they're coming to us. Uh, and I think that asking for context and getting more context and doing more digging is actually very much required for this position. Uh, and I think that like my listening skills too have also um, 
have also, you know, I don't want to say improved, but I mean, they, I feel like they also have improved as well, because when you take, uh, when you take different types of public service positions, I feel like uh, listening is like one of the first and foremost skills that, uh, that you should have and, and try to strive to be better with. Uh, and I've definitely, I feel like have been working on that um, tremendously over the last year. Uh, so I think that um, not everything needs to, to have an answer right away and listening uh, are two key takeaways for me. Thank you, Paris. Uh, Derek had his hand. Dim, Dims, are you okay to go after Are you okay to go after Derek? And yeah, Peter as well. I assume that's fine. Um, hopefully y'all can hear me. I, I would strongly echo what Paris just said. Like, um, I think prior to my own participation in steering, I think there's a lot of um, uh, maybe different perceptions on what the role is versus the reality. And I think the key thing with a role like steering is um, – it's a position and a body that has a lot of power and like all power, it's best used um, responsibly. And that key importance on like acting responsibly requires like not necessarily the greatest rate. And so sometimes I think even within the steering committee, and this is kind of like the second and a half steering body I've served with, like partly with the bootstrap and then uh, this new election. Um, uh, we often look back and question, well, what did we accomplish? What did we get done? And um, sometimes there's ways you can look at that and say like, oh, well, uh, we could have done so much more. But I think there's actually value to like uh, uh, changes happening at a rate that a community of our size can digest um, and not causing rapid churn just to keep stability in place. And so um, uh, we deal with a lot of people who engage with Kubernetes on a part-time basis as well as a full-time basis and like making massive changes around how a project is structured uh, actually can hamper that engagement. And so to me, like I'm most proud where we can make small subtle tweaks in steering that can have large impacts. Um, and I would say like the experience the last three years has kind of shown that that's um, uh, what's been most surprising to me. Uh, dive in, Nikita. Yeah, I was just going to say that uh, when I joined steering, I wasn't aware of, like, I knew that there were going to be ambiguous problems to solve, but I wasn't aware how, like, the range of ambiguous problems that would uh, need to be solved. Like, it's not just, like, conflict resolution or process-oriented. Uh, there's a ton about, like, public, public relations or marketing also that I've learned here. Uh, so I think one piece of advice that I'd have to understand what kind of problems that we'd be solving is also just to attend the public steering committee meetings that we have uh, to get an idea of what we are solving, how we solve it, and what goes on. Go for it, Dims. Oh, I think uh, Derek covered uh, both the points that I was going to make, but uh, I just want to add a little bit color to it. Um, so. We have a position uh, in this committee. Uh, we have a lot of power for sure, and we can. We need to make sure that we use it wisely, um, and best not to use it, um, especially when it comes to the people that we are governing, as well as uh, the things that we can do in the uh, larger ecosystem. Uh, Kubernetes uh, uh, is an extremely important project right now. Um, so we have to keep it going and we have to figure out ways to uh, make sure that uh, we can use the long tail of people who are helping out uh, and make sure that uh, they are able to um, help make changes uh, to Kubernetes and keep that going. The other one that I wanted to poke at was um, we are constantly evolving, right? Um, and, and so, and we have the ability, the steering committee has the ability to make changes in how the community works. Uh, how we interact with CNCF and whatnot. So uh, there's a lot of uh, context and history that uh, we should understand or try to understand. So we always rely on people who have been in steering before and uh, who are currently serving, but you know have more context. So we try to learn, you know, what what happened, how it happened, why it happened, and try to understand the background of the problem well before, like 
move fast and break things uh, <laughs> kind of uh, approach. Uh, so uh, the incremental progress, uh, like Jarek said, is definitely an important part of it as well. Um, back to you, Lucky. Excellent. Did anybody else? Uh, did everybody have an opportunity to answer? I think we're okay. Oh, I was the Go only one who did, but I. I'm sorry. I won one quick <laughs> Everybody got the good ones. <laughs> one, one, one that I want to add, though, is so something I didn't know or realize prior to joining steering. So prior prior to joining steering, I've been involved with a lot of um, horizontal um, SIGs and working groups and things like um, contributor experience and testing and attending SIG architecture meetings and things like that. Those are some great ways to follow like bigger picture ideas that are going on the project. But prior to steering and really like digging into the, the breadth and width of the, the Kubernetes project, there is so much going on and it is hard to keep track of it all. Um, the, the thing that I learned there is just like the where there's so much real work being done in all these little sub projects all over that are incrementally making the project better, moving it along just inches at a time. And we have to move it, those little small incremental pieces along um, in small incremental pieces because it's such a large project that's, that's, that's moving, that's trying to move forward and trying to move forward in a way that is um, not going to break folks. Um, but try and continue to bring value to what core Kubernetes is. Um, and yeah, it, it, you don't, you don't really know <laughs> unless you kind of go out and seek. Um, and, and, you know, so the thing that I, the advice that I would give is maybe attend a meeting that you wouldn't normally attend. Uh, like go check out a SIG that you haven't you haven't checked out before even if it's not something that is very obviously on the surface interesting to you there's probably some really cool things happening that uh that you didn't that you didn't know about and it's a great way to learn about all the different things that are going on in the project excellent thank you all we have another question here uh what have the biggest challenges been for steering in 2020 Um, well, there, there's a couple fairly obvious ones. Uh, for, for, for example, uh, moving to entirely virtual and missing out on some of the like in-person meetings and sessions and, and collaboration that we would normally have. Um, you know, most of the time, like Kubernetes being a global community, we're fairly remote most of the time anyways, and we're collaborating with folks all over the world so in in some in some ways things haven't changed but also it still has made a big impact like you know whether or not it's changed your day to day it's made kind of this impact on everybody being able to like have the headspace even to be able to like okay i need to like go to meetings i need to 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 um still do pr reviews <laughs> i still need to like do do all these things as our lives have been changing around us uh, outside of, of the specific things that we might do with kubernetes and you know I, even doing this session like i miss y'all <laughs> and and i'm eager for the opportunity for when we we, we get to kind of come back together and and be able to work in person because you know there's some things that you just can't necessarily do virtually so that to me is like one of the biggest, most obvious problems that we've we've been trying to tackle with steering and, and figure out, you know, what are tweaks we need to make in the in the community. Like, um, you know, at one point we sent out a message saying, "Hey, if you need to like cancel or postpone or like change your meeting schedule around, like that's okay. Like ad adapt to what our contributors end up needing." Um, as opposed to forcing everybody into a rigid schedule of, okay, you still need to have your meetings in, 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 you know, a perfect cadence and such. I think I saw Derek, I'll pass it to Derek. And then I saw Dims's hand too. Oh, Dims's hand too. Yeah, I, I would say like, um, I feel it's important here as the steering committee body, like to say that the challenges that everyone feels we feel. And so I think, uh, 
Christoph did a great way of uh, communicating that. To me, I think the biggest challenge and the biggest growth I've seen in Cube as a project this year is just kind of, um, I've noticed that we've become more uh, empathetic towards each other. Like we all feel like we're, we're living through a, a uniquely interesting time. Even as I'm speaking here, I was joking with our colleagues that my daughters might come rushing in at any moment during this presentation, and that would be both cool and weird at the same time. So um, I think in general, it's been healthy that uh, as the project matures, we also kind of emotionally mature and kind of grow our empathy towards uh, our contributors and our peers who may have less time uh, and an energy to invest than they might have normally. And that gives opportunity and space for new uh, fresh blood to uh, infuse the project with new ideas and energy. So uh, I actually think it's uh, been a challenge and a blessing. And for those who are wanting to engage, like try to see if you can find gaps to fill. And um, this is a great time to, to kind of ask somebody, hey, what can I do to help out? Because um, everybody's struggling to, to meet the present needs. Um, so, uh, one one thing that I don't know if people feel or not, uh, we have to listen a lot. We have to listen to uh, people in the community. We have to listen to people outside our community. We listen to what's happening in the news, uh, Twitter, uh, anything related to Kubernetes. Uh, we, we try to talk about it. We try to analyze what's happening, where and why, and is there something we can do. When you say things like, okay, uh, some SIG is not very responsive or some PRs are not getting merged, some yeah, owner's uh, files are uh, you know, not up to date, so th there is a problem. So all the problems that you can think of, we do think about them. Um, so it's, uh, uh, it's how much we can do, what we can do, and when we can do governs. Uh, you know. So if, if you feel that we are not listening, uh, please believe me, we are trying, and please do bring it to our notice. Um, even if you are not able to do something about it right away, we'll uh, try to make sure that we put it, uh, we put enough thought into it as as a team, and get back to you one way or another, uh, and uh, and try to make progress o over a period of time. So please be patient with us, uh, and uh, we are really trying here. Uh, back to you, Lucky. Thank you very much. Did anybody else want to respond to this question? Okay, we have one more question here, and I think that'll round out our time. Uh, what do you see as the biggest challenges for Kubernetes going forward? Did you want to, uh, Paris or Nikita? Nikita, take it. <laughs> Go for it, Nikita. Yeah, I think sustainability is the biggest one. Uh, we have the problem about not having enough reviewers, or, uh, not having enough approvals, and uh, not having enough responsive approvals is like a very big challenge for us. And also, our project is very skewed towards people who can contribute full time over part time. So I think figuring out a process where we can enable people who even work part time or just can contribute like a few hours to it uh, per week is something we will need to figure out. We're trying to work towards that, but I think we still need to do a lot of work to get that rolling. Paris? Um, plus one <laughs> in, in true Kubernetes fashion. <laughs> Looks good to me. <laughs> uh, Aaron. <laughs> uh, you, you'll be shocked to hear as chair of SIG testing, I feel like the project has a lot of challenges uh, in its test code base. It is extremely painful to contribute to Kubernetes at times because tests you didn't write uh, are, are failing. Um, and I think that's sort of a tragedy of the commons problem that we uh, definitely need uh, help with. I think that it uh, aligns with the steering committee's challenge of how do we encourage people to do the right thing as opposed to trying to force people to do something. Uh, so anyway. Uh so uh, sometimes when you look at it from, uh, sorry, somebody else? Keep, keep, keep it quick, Dims. Okay. 
Yeah, uh, now? when you when you look at it from outside, it seems like there's a lot of people working on a lot of things within Kubernetes. Uh, but we still really need you. What you bring to the table is really important, and we could use your help. Uh, uh, even if it is a simple taking notes, uh, doing writing some documentation, writing some tests, whatever you can do, we'll take it with uh, you know uh, uh, with you know <laughs> with great uh, humility. So please, please do try from your side. What whatever you can be. Doing. Excellent. Thank you so much. That concludes this session. I want to thank everybody uh, for showing up and asking these wonderful questions. And I want to thank Steering uh, for actually taking the time to meet with the community and answer their questions. The conversation doesn't have to stop here. I know we'll all be in the Slack, uh, uh, the KubeCon EU Slack channel. So feel free to join us and ask any questions there. But we thank you for joining. Have a wonderful KubeCon Cloud Native Con EU. Enjoy the virtual experience as I know I am, um, and we'll see you all in the community. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.